This is probably the question that I'm asked the most from my students at NAS Academy and subscribers on YouTube, and it's this. Should I use a phone or a camera to make my videos? Let's get into it. If anyone had asked me this question a few years ago, whether they should use a camera or a phone for their content creation or video production or filmmaking, I would have said go with a camera because phones were, were getting to a place where they were okay, but still not something that I would have recommended for serious filmmakers or content creators. Things have drastically changed in the last couple of years. For me, I've been using professional Canon cameras for the last 10 years. And for the last two years, I've been using the iPhone. So the iPhone 14 Pro, and more recently, the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And I have to say that what these phones can produce today in terms of video quality is just getting better and better. The first thing I wanna talk about is convenience. You often hear people say that the best camera is the one that you have with you. And your phone is literally the camera in your pocket that you carry everywhere you go. It's there, it's ready. When you have your camera, you might have to carry it around in a bag. You have probably a selection of lenses. You might have to attach your mic, a tripod, maybe a gimbal. All of those things are heavy and clunky and not convenient. So when it comes to convenience, the phone is really easy and on hand, ready to go. When it comes to video quality, phones have come a long way. We look at the latest iPhones, we have things like cinematic mode, you have Apple Log now on the iPhone that you can shoot in. You can shoot up to 4K video. You can shoot up to 60 frames per second. But when it comes to higher dynamic range, when it comes to richness of colors, when it comes to the cinematic look and feel, so far, you can't beat having a dedicated camera, being able to shoot in log video, having those higher frame rates, some of them like up to 240 plus more, up to 6K, some cameras now shooting 8K, and of course, those larger sensors are gonna give you that bigger dynamic range, making the blacks, the whites, and the colors much more rich and vibrant and inviting than the small sensor that you get on a phone. Next up, let's talk about audio quality. Now, both of these have terrible inbuilt microphones. If you're recording directly to your camera mic or your phone mic, it's not gonna sound great. I'd say definitely use an external microphone like the DJI Mic 2 or the Rode Go Wireless 2, which are the, probably the best ones that are out there at the moment for like on the go shooting and content creation and things like that. I would say that cameras are built to support better audio, but I don't necessarily think that's true anymore because if you're filming a short film, a movie or some sort of production documentary, you're gonna have a separate mic that you will sound sync later in or mix in later. So that doesn't really make a difference in that kind of context. But nowadays your phone and your camera can both use mics like this. So I'd say that camera and phone audio is probably similar because of the advancement in audio technology. On phones, you can download apps that allow you to control the settings a little bit more like your aperture, ISO and shutter speed. But of course, cameras are built for this. So the versatility of being able to control those settings for your picture quality, but also you have the ability to take off the lens and change it to something else entirely. So being able to put on better optics, giving you versatility for your shots, wide, zoom, prime, whatever you want, you can have that control over how your picture looks. And now of course, phones do have more and more cameras on the back and you do have like a wide camera, you do have a zoom lens. Some of these cameras will take more advantage of the sensor than others. I know that the zoom and the wide have a reduced pixel count. They don't make use of the full sensor. And I know that they are getting better and better, but still in 2024, you can't beat having real lenses or real optics that you can change out on your camera. Another big factor in your decision-making process is going to be price. Now, this is one of the cheapest cameras you can buy, and I wouldn't recommend using this for video, actually. I'm just using this as, just using this for demonstration purposes. You would probably want to invest in something a little more modern, like the newer Sony or Canon cameras that are gonna give you things like good autofocus, log functionality, higher frame rates, also shooting in 4K, maybe 6K, all of that doesn't come cheap. If you're looking at some of the more modern cameras, you're going to be parting with at least, at least $1,200, a thousand pounds to get something. Now, your iPhone is probably gonna cost you just as much as the camera, but remember that the phone isn't just a camera. It is something that you take everywhere, something that you use for 
all the convenient things in your life and entertainment. But also another important factor is that you can edit on your phone. So with your camera, you'll need to film and then take the SD card out and then transfer it and then upload it. Maybe you might need to proxy it if you don't have a powerful enough PC. There's, there's a whole process just to start editing. But with your phone, it's as simple as dropping your footage into something like CapCut or InShot or whatever you're using to edit with. You can also upload directly to social from here. So also it comes back to convenience. Filming, your editing, your uploading, your socials, it's all on your phone. So when it comes to price, you might be paying a similar price to the phone that you would pay for a decent camera, but the phone has so much more packed into it, making it even more value for money. So today is Naya's Nuggets of Knowledge. Excuse me one second, I've got to go. My planet needs me. Choose from, I have to choose from camera and phone. Yeah, how do you know that? I haven't even spoken yet. Um, because I remember you talking about it. What, this morning? Yeah. So this <coughs> is a Canon 4000D yeah. camera, and this is an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Yeah. Now what I want you to do is pretend that this is a Canon R5. Do you know what that means? No. Excellent. This is a Canon R5 and this is an iPhone 15 Pro Max. What I want you to do is I want you to choose one to go and make a video with. Okay. You know what, I find phones more easier to use than cameras. So you would choose the phone? Yes. To go and make your video? Yes. Why is that? Because you can e you easily know how to, because um, a camera has all these settings and stuff and it's more hard to set up, but a phone you can just easily take it round with you and easily film and do stuff. So you would prefer to use the phone over the camera because of ease of use? Yeah. And I think that is one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, and that is ease of use. Because Naya is eight, you're gonna give her a high-end camera, she won't be able to use it. And if you think about it, most people don't necessarily want to invest the time to learn how to use that camera, or they might want, if they bought so it, can I just go Hang on a second, hang on a second. We're still, I'm still discussing. This is a very important point. Ease of use is something that is gonna affect whether you buy or use something or not. So you could buy a very expensive high-end camera, then not know how to use it in the manual <coughs> settings, and then end up not using it, it just sits in a drawer. And I know quite a few content creators have done that. When they have their phone with them, it's convenient, but it's also super easy to use. It's literally just point and shoot, right? And then yeah. you can make a video. But also, what else can you do on your phone that you can't do on your camera? You, oh, you can add effects in. Yeah, so you can edit it as well. To edit on the computer. Pizza. And that takes time. Exactly, and you've got to learn software to do that as well. Yeah. And CapCut was really easy to use because you chose that in the last challenge to make a video, didn't you? Yeah. So it's a low barrier to entry for a lot of people who just want to start making videos. They don't have to really learn. It's very intuitive. And even our eight-year-old so can now test can subjects make can make it. And here is the kicker. We're not making a video. I just wanted to see which one you would choose. What? Right, I'm taking your phone now. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so coming back to the question, which one is right for you? A phone or a camera for your videos is going to depend wholly or solely, entirely, on what type of content you want to create. If you are looking to make TikTok videos or nice Instagram reels, take some nice pictures that you're doing casually for social or even as a full-time business, but it's on those platforms, then you might want to consider getting yourself a decent phone and then maybe later investing in a camera. If you are looking to create more polished cinematic pieces, maybe you want to upload things to Facebook and YouTube more, you want to do longer form content like, like what I've been doing in Vlogtober for the last 13 days, then think about investing in a camera. Now, a great place to learn about cameras is of course the Kai Creative YouTube page. Make sure you subscribe, oh, cheeky little... Uh, self-promotion there. Also, if you wanna do professional work, if you wanna film things like events or weddings, then look at investing in a camera. And ultimately, that's what this would be, an investment in your future business. I mean, the same could be said of the phone as well, if you're using it for your business or you're, you're using content for your social media strategy to further your business venture. For me, if you've been watching my vlogs, hint, hint, I've been using both my camera and my phone for my content. So I've been doing these chatty type talking heads parts for like the main meat of the video. And then when I'm out and about for convenience, I've just got my phone and I'm filming 4K on my phone and it's good for B-roll, good for time lapses. And it's good for just when I need to shoot something and instead of not getting it, I have something that can shoot it and then I can put that into my video. So I have a mishmash of using my camera and using my phone. So ultimately what it comes down to is use the tools that you have readily available to you to tell the story that you want to tell. 
So that's the end of day 13 of Vlogtober. I hope you found today's content valuable. If you did, don't forget to drop us a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the little bell button for notifications. And yeah, with that said, guys, I will see you tomorrow.